Prime Minister Andrei Plenković and his ministers held another cabinet session today away from the capital, this time in Osijek, as part of an effort to show their commitment to the development of the eastern Croatian city and Osijek Baranja County. The government adopted a package of measures that aim at improving the quality of life in the city, from ones concerning waste management to mosquito control. Officials signed a number of contracts that will fund infrastructure, business, environment, energy administration and regional development projects. Total funding for all of these projects is around 1 billion kuna, with 300 million specifically going to the city of Osijek. Dutch authorities are still trying to determine how Slobodan Praljak was able to smuggle poison into the courtroom of the UN War Crimes Tribunal. The former Bosnian Croat general committed suicide by poisoning in front of cameras on Wednesday as the court was delivering an appeals ruling in the case against six Croats from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Investigators are questioning witnesses. So far, it has only been confirmed that the deadly substance Praljak ingested was chemical. Meanwhile, a suicide note written and sealed two years ago has reportedly emerged, along with instructions that it be opened in the case of his untimely death. In it, Praljak allegedly writes that he wants a private burial. Lawmakers began their day by again addressing the ICTY ruling in the case against six Croats from Bosnia and Herzegovina and the events that followed since Wednesday's dramatic courtroom events. The debate was initiated by two opposition parties. Branimir Bunyac of GVZ accused the majority of spreading hysteria instead of a calm, measured response, but also castigated Glass and the SDP for refusing to attend a minute of silence that was meant to commemorate all of the victims of the wars in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Meanwhile, Most MP Miro Bulj accused some of Croatia's leaders of working against Croats in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Santa Claus landed in Rijeka this morning on a direct flight from Laponia. His arrival signals the opening of a special advent program in Omišaj and new international flights that are available from Rijeka Airport. Santa will be touring the Kvarna region until Christmas Eve. In sports, the draw for groups that will be competing at the 2018 World Cup in Russia is taking place today at 4 p.m. Croatia is in pot two, the second strongest group. Zadar beat Sibona last night in round eight of the domestic basketball championship for a score of 76 to 66. Kristian Krajna led the home team with 21 points and eight rebounds, while Luka Žoric was Sibona's top scorer with 16 points and 10 rebounds. Zadar currently has a six win, one loss record with one game less, while Sibona has a four and three record also with one game left to play. Cedevita tops the rankings with a perfect record. Today's forecast calls for some afternoon sunny spells on the coast and in Slavonia. The rest of the country can count on more cloudy skies with some light precipitation, which will taper off by the end of the day. A northeasterly wind will pick up on the coast by tonight. The Velobitz area can expect powerful gusts. Elsewhere, wind speeds will be more moderate. The day's highs will range from 1 to 6 degrees inland and from 9 to 14 on the coast. The weekend will be colder and windier, but mostly dry in the interior. Some partly sunny skies and even some sunny spells are expected on Saturday, while Slavonia and Lika may see some light snow flurries on Sunday. Winds will be mostly moderate, north-northwesterlies. On the coast, it will be partly to mostly sunny. The far south will get some clouds and a chance of rain on Sunday. Strong northeasterly winds will continue blowing on the north coast throughout the weekend. The Velebit area can expect gale force gusts. Conditions will improve on Monday as winds die down and clouds give way to predominantly sunny skies.